Okay, so tomorrow I want to make some sourdough bread. So tonight I'm going to feed my starter. This is my sourdough starter. I have a whole video showing how to make this. Very simple um, directions. It takes about a week to make a sourdough starter. Or if you have a friend who makes sourdough, you can get um, from them. Or you can buy starters. But this is my starter. I have about a cup now. And what I want to do is I want to feed it tonight to kind of wake it up and to build it up a little bit. And then I'll feed it again tomorrow when I make my bread dough. So I like to feed it whole wheat flour, and it really doesn't matter how much you feed it. Uh, you just want to feed it equal proportion of flour and water. So I have about a cup, so I want to build it up a little bit. So I'm going to probably gonna add about 75 grams of whole wheat flour. And, well, it ended up being 77, but that's fine. You want to add an equal weight of water. So this is where a kitchen scale really comes in handy. So I'm going to put 77 grams of water. And that's sort of an arbitrary number. It's just what um, will help fill up this jar. And then I'm just going to stir this. get all of that new flour incorporated okay so I'll just cover this up and let it sit on the counter overnight and then we'll get back to it in the morning all right good morning we're gonna go ahead and start this morning I'm gonna feed my starter I'm gonna start to soak my flour I'm also gonna measure out my add-ins and none of this has to be done all first thing in the morning except for feeding the starter um, I just do it all at once since I'm working here in the kitchen. So I'm going to feed the starter again. So probably give it another 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. Okay, and I'll go ahead and stir that up in just a second. I'm also going <clears> to <throat> measure out my flour because I want to soak it. And you really only need to soak it for 15 minutes to a half an hour, but since I have the flour and the water out and the scale out, I just do it right now. So I use a total of 600 grams of flour, and you can use all white flour or some white, some whole wheat. I have not done a 100% whole wheat flour yet. Um, usually I do 400 grams of all purpose and then 200 grams of whole wheat. Sometimes I add a little rye flour in there as well. So that's 400 grams of all-purpose, and I'll do 200 grams of whole wheat. Right, and that gives us a total of 600 grams of flour. And I do a 60% hydration, which just means there's 60% of the weight of the flour in the weight of the water. So I'll tear this out, and it's 360 grams. Okay. Now, 60% hydration flour, or 60% hydration will give you a bread that has pretty small holes. The higher the water content, the bigger the holes um, in the crumb of the bread. But I use this a lot for sandwich bread, so I don't want things falling through. So I do 60%. It also makes it a little easier to handle. So the last thing I'm going to weigh out is some add-ins. And the bare minimum, you want to add salt. I add about 15 to 20 grams of salt. And you can adjust that to your taste, but you have to add at least some salt. And at this point, you can add all sorts of things. You can add seeds or chopped herbs or nuts or dried fruit um, or something like Parmesan cheese, some kind of low moisture cheese I think would work. You can also add a little oil at this point. I usually just add salt and I like to add seeds. They add a nice flavor. Um, I'm going to add a little flaxseed meal. I like adding this especially if it's going to have whole wheat flour in it because you don't really notice it texture wise but it helps boost the like the omegas and other proteins and health benefits. So Put about 15 grams of that in. A lot of times I don't measure this, I just throw it in. And you can measure this right before you add it, but I tend to forget to add my salt, so I measure it out. Also since the scale's out. 
So now I'm just going to mix all these things up. Stir in that extra flour and water. And I'll also mix this flour and water together. And I just soak it primarily to help the uh, flour absorb the water. It makes it easier to handle. Now this is going to be fermented for a long time, so it's not really soaking it for the soaking benefits. It just makes it easier to handle. And it doesn't need to be kneaded or anything. You just need to combine it. So it's looking super shaggy like that, but that's fine. So I just cover this like that and cover this. And I usually put this on top so I don't forget to add that in. And basically you could just let this sit for a few hours this morning. It doesn't really matter. What you want the starter to do is kind of reach its peak. Ideally you would get it right at its peak, right when it's just starting to fall. But if you get it a little bit early or a little bit late, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's pretty flexible so if things come up throughout the day as long as you can get it first thing in the morning sometime around lunch or in the afternoon and then right before bed is really the only time you have to attend to it and it's just a few minutes each time. There's just a lot of hours in between the, each of those things. So in the morning I feed the starter, soak the flour, measure the salt. At lunchtime I'll combine these things and knead it and then just before bed I will shape it and put it in the fridge for overnight. And I'll show you each of those steps as I do it. All right, so it's been about five and a half hours since I mixed this all up this morning. The starter actually peaked and this has started to fall down, but that's not a problem. It just depends on how warm it is in your house and how active your starter is, how long that will take. But as long as it's either on the way up or on the way down, recently fed, it will be fine. I have here my flour in my water and my flavoring add in things here. So that's the salt and the flax seed. And I'm going to add my starter and my add-ins and knead this. The amount of starter that you add, I usually add around 150 grams thereabouts. Um, the more starter that you add, the s more sour your bread will turn out, uh, among other variables as well. But if you're trying to get something a little more tangy, you can use more starter and if you're looking for something a little more mild use a little less. I like about 150. Sometimes I do a little bit more. Um, most of the time I'll use a little bit more just because I have you know a little bit more to use up. So that's 150 grams. And I'll also go ahead and throw in the salt and the flax seed. And you want to mix this together until it forms a dough and then we're going to knead it. So it's pretty stiff with the flour and the water, so I just get it sort of started with the spoon and then I'll switch to my hand here pretty quickly. All right, so I got most things incorporated here, so I will do sort of a usual kneading motion to knead it. And you're going to knead it about 10 minutes, so that would be about the same of a regular bread recipe as well. And just knead it till it's smooth and elastic. All right, once you have your dough kneaded, then you're just going to put it in a clean container and cover it up, and then we'll form it this evening right before bed. Your starter will now go in the refrigerator till next time you want to bake. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and form this loaf, and I'm going to put it in this bowl, and it's going to sit overnight. So you can buy baskets specifically for this purpose, but what I use is a bowl with a clean, lint-free cloth. So this is just a dish towel or a tea towel. And I'm going to sprinkle it with flour. Try to get it in there without any huge wrinkles. So I'm going to dust it with a decent amount of flour. And this will help form the shape of the loaf and the flour keeps it from sticking to the towel. And then I have a spatula. I just got it a little bit wet. It helps get it out of the bowl without losing too much of the bubbles that have formed. So it helps pull it out of the bowl cleanly. I'm just going to put it on the counter to shape it. And then it's going to sit in the refrigerator overnight.
and you can add a little water to your hands or a little flour. Sometimes one works a little better than the other depending on how your dough feels. So you can try either of those. And I'm just kind of pulling the skin tight and gathering it all up in the middle like this. So this will be the top of the loaf. And just gather everything underneath like that. And you kind of want to touch it less, <laughs> the little uh, as little as you can. The more you touch it, the more it will just stick to your hands and become a mess. So I'm going to dust a little bit more flour on top. I'm going to put these like this. And I just put this in the refrigerator overnight, so I leave it like this. You can leave it in the refrigerator longer, and it will slowly rise, which gives really great flavor. Um, if you're going to leave it in for more than overnight or more than like 10 hours, I would put this whole thing inside either a plastic bag or cover it with plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out. But just overnight I just do like that. I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator and we'll bake it tomorrow morning. Alright, the next morning I am preheating my oven and my Dutch oven. This is a cast iron Dutch oven. You can use any large oven proof pot with a lid. That works out really nicely for me. We're going to preheat this to 500 degrees. I also pulled my bread out of the refrigerator so it can start to warm up a little bit. That's what it looks like. And it's uh, grown a little bit. And we'll let that warm up while the oven preheats. So I let it come till the oven is preheated and then I let it sit for another about 15 minutes to make sure that the Dutch oven is fully preheated. Alright, so I'm going to put the bread in the oven, and you have to move quick, but you also have to be very careful. This is a very hot Dutch oven, and I'm going to take it out, I'm going to score the bread, pop it in, put the lid on, and put it back in the oven. So. When you take the bread out, I just take the whole cloth out, and the cloth away it should if you put enough flour it should come off just like this and then I use a serrated knife to score it and then carefully drop it in put the lid on and back in the oven it goes there's a couple different ways you can bake it depending on how crunchy of a crust that you want and I do it this very simple way that I've started doing. Um, once it goes in the oven I lower the temperature to 450 degrees and I set my timer for 45 minutes. Right so the bread has been in for 45 minutes and careful when you open the oven because it's hot but it's also pretty steamy. I'll pull this out see what it looks like. You want to make sure you're opening it away from yourself too because a good amount of steam will come out of this. So that's what it looks like right now. You can see where the score marks it has a lot of oven spring. It kind of burst out of those score marks. It looks really good. Pretty happy with it. Um, if you want the crust a little darker you can leave it uncovered for five minutes or so. But I think I like this a little bit lighter. It makes it a little bit easier for um, my little one to eat. So I'll go ahead and take this out and let it cool. All right, so to get this out, um, just be really careful because your pot is going to be really hot and your bread's going to be really hot. So I always use hot pads like this. And just let it cool on a rack until it's completely cooled, and then we'll cut into it. Alright, so the bread is cooled, so let's cut into this thing and see how it looks. Generally, I cut it in half to make it a little bit more manageable, and then I slice it. That's what it looks like on the inside. It's perfect for sandwiches because there's not a lot of big holes in it. And I usually just slice up one half at a time so that one stays a little bit fresher. So 
So that's what it looks like all finished. I hope you found this video useful, have some useful information for you. If you would like, I can film another recipe that's a little bit of a higher hydration. There's a slightly different way that you knead the bread and it's a slightly different result. Um, so I can do that next time I make um, you know, a more holy loaf. If you'd like, leave some comments down below if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.